Want to know who's who in the Jeffrey Epstein Zoo? Journalists Lisa and Jen bring you the ultimate deep dive. Prince Andrew's crimes are just the start. We'll lay it all out. Hello and welcome to the Prince and the Pervert podcast. I'm Lisa Tate. I'm Jen Tarrant. Now, firstly, we have an announcement. The f- alleged felon, Jelaine Maxwell, is married, Jen. Really? Yes, but she won't say who she, her spouse is, even to the court. Well, she won't say all her financials. To the court either. So Jen's going to update us on the news that Jelaine has a spouse. But before then, we just want to recap that the US District Judge, Alison Nathan in Manhattan, rejected Maxwell's bid for bail. You're probably mostly aware of that. Agreeing with prosecutors that the wealthy socialite posed a flight risk. Yay! Well, if you won't say who your spouse is... If you're not being truthful and answering the basic questions that would be asked mm. to you when you're arrested... How honest are you? Yes, exactly. And she wouldn't go into detail about her bank accounts. Mm. Very interesting. And when you consider this is not only a sex trafficking case, it's also a money laundering case, that really makes your eyebrows dart up. Certainly does, because it was all about the money laundering. Jeffrey's little perversion, though it's not little, I think was the cost of doing business with Epstein. And I think all those people he was money laundering for weighed up the cost other people's children to me making money. And quite frankly, they thought their money was more important than human lives. Exactly. And some of the people who worked for Epstein were like that as well. Oh, they were. Like the guy in the US Virgin Islands who did the IT, he had to have it pointed out to him by another staff member. Would you have your daughters come here? Oh, then it hit me. That's just ridiculous. Yep. Paying no attention at all. And lack of care for these girls. Duty of care, where was it? A lot of people thought, oh, well, they're not like my daughter. My daughter wouldn't get involved in something like that. Are you talking of Eileen Guggenheim? Definitely. There's, it's quite a bit of a topic going on at the moment on social media. People are going, oh, well, you know, my daughter wouldn't act like that. How do you know? Mm. It wasn't just... Girls who'd had rough lives, who were on the streets or had previously been involved in illegal activities. There were girls with hopes and dreams, with ambitions that they targeted as well. Yes. So, for example, Eileen Guggenheim, who I just mentioned then, one of the survivors, Maria Farmer, she was her dean at the New York Academy of Art. And Maria alleges that Eileen trafficked her to Epstein and Maxwell. And then when she complained about it to Guggenheim, she said, well, what about your daughter? What about your daughter, Isabel? Could that happen? And she said, that would never happen to Isabel. Because the elites look after their own, but everybody else is disposable. Exactly. That's what I've learnt. So, Jen, can you take us through the happy news that Jelaine is married? Well, it was interesting. Uh Is she married? Is she not? She was asked if there was a spouse Mm. and she declined to give information about said spouse. Now, we're saying spouse instead of husband because in most of America and quite a few other countries, you can marry anybody, male or female. So I've been thinking, who could she have married? Because Epstein did those marriages of convenience with his staff. Yep. And there, there's several now taking on the estate for the forced marriages between two women. Yep. And they were straight or identify as straight at the moment. So it was a convenient marriage to keep people in the country. So why would Jelaine marry? Would she marry for love? Well, according to everything, she was madly in love with Epstein mm. and that's why she did it. According to certain articles that are trying to make us feel sorry for the woman. I'm thinking it's more to do with the fact in America, spouses can't be forced to give evidence against each other. Mm. So could she have married someone to stop that happening for her own defence and their defence? Yes. So who's got a lot to lose if they got if they get dragged into the dock in America? Who do you think it'd be? There's quite a few, but there's some big names. 
Well, the first one would be, is she married to Prince Andrew? Well, there we go. That was my first thought. And maybe it is evil and completely wrong. But months ago, with the whole Sarah Ferguson popping up in all the magazines, and now she's doing her YouTube series, Storytime with Fergie. Oh, I hate that woman. I thought there could be a bit of a reconciliation because the newspapers in the UK were making a big deal that Fergie was seen with Andrew going to church. And oh my gosh, Fergie's being seen with Andrew around the place. And there was rumours and hints of a reconciliation and further hints of another royal wedding when they were talking about the daughters both being engaged and about to be married, that hints that maybe those two were going to renew vows, remarry again. But that hasn't happened. Well, I'm just wondering, with Andrew and Jelaine, there would have to be permission. And she would only do it if her advisors said yes. So maybe if his lawyers came forward and said, here's a solution. But does he need to get permission? Because he's already been married once. I think Prince Harry had to. Yeah, but that was his first wedding. And hopefully the only wedding. I don't know. And it depends on where they got married. Maybe he doesn't need permission to get married elsewhere. And that's the other thing. People are trawling through looking for marriage documents for Gistane in America. She could have been married, you know, 10 years ago, five years ago in another country. So you have seen some documents from a Jelaine Maxwell that were floating around. It was an Ancestry.com uh, screenshot. Someone married a man called John? Yes, there was a Gistane Maxwell and a Gislaine Clark in Florida who got married. Now, this thread has since been deleted, so I'm not going to say the woman's name who compiled all this because it may have been a red herring thrown in to distract people. Supposedly, Gistane married a John Robert Craigie in 1993. And then in this woman was sent info, so we can't verify this source at all, that in 95, a company was set up under the name Gislaine Craigie in Georgia. The company is called Exron or something along those lines. Now, all these tweets have been deleted. I've only got one quick screenshot of the first one. So that was back in 93. Now, that doesn't track with all the information we know about Gistane because she was running around. She had a big diamond on her finger. I think it was Maria or maybe Virginia had said that she used to point to it and go, that's my engagement ring from Jeffrey. You know, they were constantly together. So the 93 marriage, I think there's another poor woman out there with a similar name to Gistane. So... Okay. Well, the second person that's been discussed online is her latest boyfriend, Scott Borgeson. He was the man that she was living with in the mansion at Manchester by the Sea, and he's involved in some cargo company. Maybe it is him, but I honestly think it's to do with the spouses can't testify or be forced to testify against each other. Or unless it was, as I said earlier, to do with the fact that sham marriages were a thing in the Epstein crew. That he'd already got so many of his other staff to marry other people they were bringing into the country. Mm. Maybe it was her turn to do it. Fascinating, isn't it? Because we know about the visas that they were organising through various businesses. Yes. Sarah Kellen Vickers. Now, did you see this week they found her first husband? Yes, we've been looking for ages. Oh. I, I am not as good as Agent Hades. You should... Follow, I've de you know Agent Hades, I've worked out, is a man. So we can call him he or she now. We've got the right pronouns. Yeah, rather than them. So he found a marriage in Hawaii and a divorce. And then she lived with a guy who was did modelling, like kind of beach modelling, bikini girl stuff. Those photos were atrocious of her. They're on our website, jeffreyepsteinpodcast.com. Yes, those photos are quite horrifying. Like, she looks like some kind of sand nymph who's turned up on, oh, Luke Skywalker's planet. You know his original planet yep. with all the sand? Honestly, she looks like a scary nymph. Or as Maria Farmer's coined it, swamp thing. <laughs> God swamp love her. Thing, swamp Ma thing, Maria is my personal hero. 
She's very good at that. She's got away with words. So Sarah somehow by about 2002, 2001, made her way from Hawaii and into the Epstein clutches. She does have a modelling portfolio online. So maybe it was via the Victoria's Secret mm. connection she ran into Epstein then. Yes. Anyway, fast forward a decade or so, and in 2014, she applied for an outside worker to come into the US. For her interior design business. She needed someone to fluff pillows. Mm. So I'll let you all work out what you think about that. But it's certainly very interesting, these sham marriages. So yeah, Justine's may be for love, if she has a heart. But I think it's more to do with hiding or securing someone's safety or securing someone's silence. Hell, it could be someone even closer involved. Mm. You know, what's the marital status of Endike and Khan, the accountant and the solicitor for Epstein's Trust? I think Endike is married. I only say that because um, Jeffrey Epstein paid for them to have IVF. Ah, he was very generous. You know, he was buying people houses for weddings and you know, things oh, like yes, that. Oh, yes, I know of one in Connecticut, actually. My question is, do they actually forever own that house or was it just done to launder money? You know, the stock market crashes, you lose that money. But if you buy property, it's a little bit safer. And yes. maybe the deal was, legally you own it, but we can take it back. But when we do, you know, we'll give you something else. And then when the police come around... Yeah, it's yours and it's nothing to do with us. Us, the money laundering. So there may mm. possibly be a lot of people going, cool, sweet, I now own a house outright and no one can come and grab it. Well, because primarily they were laundering money. Yeah. Oh, they had the honey trap with the poor kids. Yeah. But it was a money laundering operation. Yep. For one person. But who knows? He says Les Wexner, the owner of Victoria's Secrets, was his only client, but you don't know. We don't know how far these tentacles go. No, we don't, because we're already in the royal family. There's a Khashoggi in the middle of it who was an arms dealer from the 80s and 90s. There's Blackwater. Yes. What about Blackwater? I'm so confused about that. Well, what was it? Brian Vickers and his then fiance Sarah Kellen, met up via a friend of Vickers, the guy who owned Blackwater. Blackwater, of course, is the guy who was basically a private arms dealer, you know, setting up little private armies for dictators everywhere. Yeah, and they went and met him in Dubai in about 2012, 2013. We don't know if that ended up being a link for Epstein that he used and abused. We don't know, but it's an interesting, holy hell, look at this. You know? Well, look, maybe they were into Labradoodles or something. They both bred Labradoodles. That could be it. You know, they might be amongst your crafty associates. No, I doubt it. A baker, they're both bakers. They were sourdough connoisseurs. That's it. That's because it. I've heard that's really, really hard to make and you've got to commit to it and you've got to, like, worship the sourdough starter. And... You certainly do. So, okay. In relation to the sourdough starter, I do have a story. It comes from the TV show Succession, which is loosely based on Rupert Murdoch's life. Anyway, it's the old man's birthday and he's 80 and his son who lives in New Mexico, interesting, mm -hmm. gives his dad a gift and goes, here you go, Dad, I know you've got everything, but here's some sourdough starter. And he gives it to the billionaire and he's kind of like, mm, 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 thanks. <laughs> he just handed it off to the kitchen staff. So sorry, that was a bit of a diversion. But yes, I have heard that about sourdough. Mm, it's very tricky. Yes, exactly. Now, I've got some Prince Andrew news. More? Yeah, well, there hasn't been a lot recently. Well, no, just Dane has taken all the high, you know, the limelight. So his official website has been taken down, Jen. Ooh. The Duke of York org now automatically redirects to the main royal.uk page. Now, that is a brilliant move. I think it's good. It's an acknowledgement by the firm, the royal family, whatever you want to call that group, that maybe they acknowledge the fact he's on the nose 
Mm. He's caused disgrace and no longer works for them. But his Twitter account is still up, but it hasn't been touched since just before, or no, just after the train wreck interview that he did last year. Okay. That's still there. I haven't been blocked by that one yet. Oh, yeah, because I don't think anyone's behind it. I think they lost the password. Yeah, well, it might be with that woman who was sacked, you know, ah, his private secretary. Sec- yeah. Very but, interesting. But there's also some really, really sad news coming out of the UK about Pizza Express as well. Oh, my God. We need your support, people. Okay. Shout out to John who found this. Due to the current economic situation, Pizza Express is going to have to get rid of 47 restaurants. We hope it's not working because that's a historical site. It is. And we will start a petition to keep it alive. We will. We'll start a petition and people can sign it because it's important. It's an historical thing now. And we also like to be at the forefront of uh, shit stirring. Really? Yes. Now, could I just actually, before I go into Prince Andrew and the legal trouble he's in, Jen, did you know a group of us on Twitter have suggested some spouses for Jelaine Maxwell? Other than the ones I think. Yes. Ooh, who have you got? Right. Well, I'd like to do a shout out for Jimmy. He suggested Vlad the Impaler, who was the inspiration for Dracula. That's suitable. Very suitable. Now, we've got Sarah Ferguson. And oh, she'd do anything for money. money. And she can also move out of Andrew's house now. Finally. And Courtney Love. Well, she's sloppy as all hell. Yeah, why not? Messy, messy, messy. So if Jelaine won't tell the Southern District of New York who she's married to, we will put together a highly speculative list. I've got Jax Taylor. Do you know who he is? Isn't he reality something boy? Well, yes, he's on Vanderpump Rules. He is the naughty boy grown into a very grumpy adult bad guy type. Now, I think it's possible that he married her by accident in Vegas in the 90s. Rough weekend, too much champagne, too much nose candy. Yeah, you know, oh, whoops, woke up, married, oh, who cares, wander off, never going to marry anyway, who cares? I can't, can't say a name. Yeah, true. Right, number two is the princess of white privilege, Gwyneth Paltrow. Oh, that's left field, but it works. Now, have you heard about her vaginal egg offering? The Yoni Balls. The Yoni Ball. So it's a ceramic ball that you're meant to tuck inside your vagina. Well, she did have that candle. Yes. Smells like my vagina or something. Yes. So she's often talking about her vagina. And Jelaine was often talking about sex. Mm. And Gwyneth is part of a allegedly VIP sex club in Los Angeles. So I think they've got a lot in common. All right, the next one is a match made in hell. Charlie Sheen. (laughs) Well, he has, um, have you ever read the divorce papers? Yes. Oh. They're they're messy. Messy, very messy. Could be. So he's the only person we think is as scary as Jelaine. Yeah, he is a scary man. He's a perfect match for her, for Epstein's co-conspirator. Winning. True. Now, I've got Cody Brown, who is the the husband in the Sister Wives crew. He's got four wives. What's one more? And I'd like to see Jelaine scare the wives. Oh, that'd be funny. Yeah. Not so good for the wives, but then again, they agreed to marry a, a man who already had wives. So, yes, if we just think it's for our amusement. It's not great, but we would like to watch that. Yes. Speaking of which, you have been watching The Real Housewives of New York to see who turns up in the background. Again, taking one for the team. I have actually watched all these before. Mm. But, yeah, so I'm watching it, stopping it whenever they're in the party or in a cafe or a bar or on the street, scanning the faces, scanning the faces. Very interesting because, you know, I was actually having a chat with a housewife husband. Were you? Yeah. Who were you talking to? On the weekend. Oh, I'm not going to divulge names because, you know. It's someone from Melbourne's husband. Yes, but I have linkages to both with husbands, a Melbourne husband and a New York husband. Shine, shine, shine then. Yes. But he is really nice, actually, so he's cool. All right, here we go. It is the final one, and I think this is a perfect match. Harvey Weinstein. (laughs) Yes. They have a lot in common. 
They do. And if you go to our website, you can see a photo of them together. He's like wearing tucks and tails. She's got some kind of weirdo mask on. And look, I'm not going to go into any fashion commentary. And Epstein is got a naval uniform on. Oh, that's when he had all the fake medals. Yeah. Oh. That upset people, didn't it? As it should. But what can they do? He's dead now. Mm. So let's go back to Prince Andrew and his current legal problems. Now, this is from Sky News, and it says, a leading extradition lawyer has told Sky News it's very likely the UK government and the Home Office will play some part in deciding if and when Prince Andrew talks to US authorities. Mm. Remember I said that Home Office is the target? See, if he wasn't a member of the royal family, he would have been extradited by now for sure. They would Mm. have gone in hard, they would have grabbed him and run. But it's a very, very delicate situation. Well, he hasn't been charged with anything. He's just a witness at this stage. But last month it was reported that prosecutors had submitted a legal assistance request asking their home office for their assistance to speak to Prince Andrew. You know, they wouldn't do that if it was just a bit of a witness statement. And the fact he won't sit down and talk to the FBI, even though he claims he's tried to, Mm. means that this is more serious than what did you see when you walked in the room and then ran out screaming, going, oh, my gosh, you know. So Karen Todner, she is the lawyer that they've spoken to, the extradition specialist, and she says that there's already that MLA which is like the mutual assistance in legal cases between the UK and the US. So inevitably the government and the Home Office will be involved. I imagine they wouldn't like that at all. Oh, no. So Prince Andrew doesn't have diplomatic immunity, she said. So the process has started and it will follow through. Ask how long that will take, she said, next six months or so. Well, they've got a year of before the actual court case starts. So it's the discovery period up until December, January? Yep. So they asked her about, you know how there's that back and forth about, we've asked him to help, yes, we've replied, they haven't replied to us. Now, so they asked her, would the Americans back down on wanting Prince Andrew to talk in person? And she said it's very unlikely. Okay. So it's just a game at the moment, isn't it, to see how long they can put him off. My experience of the Americans in judicial proceedings is they feel they police the world and what they say goes, and you've got to have a fairly compelling reason for what they want not to not happen. I think his position in the royal family is the only thing that's stopped him being dragged off at the moment. Mm. Prince Andrew has always denied seeing anything improper, but then I read something today with Bradley Edwards. He's a lawyer for about 20 of the victims, He said that he's got a couple of other witnesses who were around Epstein and Prince Andrew. Wow. So they said at the time the Duke of York has offered his assistance to the Department of Justice on a number of occasions. I think that's more to do with, no, I'm sorry, that date doesn't suit me. I have golf that day. How about X, Y and Z? I think that's the extent of him helping. Exactly. Stalling. Yeah, I think it is stalling, hoping the fire will go out of the case. But considering Gistane's now been arrested and a trial date is set for July 12th next year, the fire hasn't gone out. I had a dream last night and he was in it playing golf and he was in a blue polo shirt. Your dreams are being invaded by this case. Well, yeah, I thought at first it was just quarantine, okay, but... We're allowed out of the house now and we're allowed to go to restaurants and things. So what's going on? I've so far had recurring Dershowitz dreams. He's Epstein's former lawyer. The one who keeps his undies on. Who yells and sues all the survivors. And now Prince Andrew at a golf course. Maybe you need help. Yes. Well, look, I probably do, but it's probably boring for people to listen to my dreams. But I just want to let you guys know to be careful. Yeah. Because you don't want to dream about Dershowitz. No. <laughs> now, the next piece I've got is Jelaine posed as a journalist named Janet Marshall to secure the purchase of the sprawling New Hampshire hideaway, according to the New York Post. And she also used the name Jen Marshall. 
Jen the journalist, hello. On behalf of all Jens in the world, and on behalf of all journalists, especially journalists called Jen, as I am, oh, how rude of you. I'm appalled. But then again, I've also been called Jan recently. So, yeah, double. I'm doubly offended here. I and would be. I am an award winning journo. Exactly. She is award winning. So don't come for it on Twitter. I'll slap you on Twitter. I will gift war you into oblivion. That's how she takes people on is gifts. Yeah, my humour wins every time. So the real estate agent told the FBI agent the buyers for the house introduced themselves as Scott and Janet Marshall. We know of another Scott, Scott Borges, and I spoke about him earlier. He had the house near Boston and he works in cargo. Is that potentially him? Could have been, but they said he had a British accent. So was this mm. one of the military guys organised by one of her older brothers? Yep. Though they won't say which brother organised the ex-military guys to look after her. Mm. Fascinating, isn't it? We just don't know. Though I did have somebody contact me saying when the FBI raided and she ran into another room, was this because she thought assassins were after her? Did she think her time was up? And I went, well, no, because there'd been helicopters and planes buzzing the house the day before, enough that the neighbours were mm. really pissed off and were making a bit of noise about this. And some of them knew who to contact to go, hey, what's going on? Mm. Plus a long driveway. She would have seen them coming. She yeah. would have had security cameras. She knew. Assassins don't make huge noises. Why did she run off then? Just flight or fight? I think so. It was like, oh. I honestly don't think she ever thought she was going to be holding, that she had enough protection from those above her. She believed she had protection and that that's why when she was hot mic'd, it was picked up that she was going, I can't believe this is hot, man. Well, what's going on? Oh, no, fuck. You know, I think she honestly believed she was above the law. I was thinking about that this morning in the car over here because you know how I play a psychologist on the internet? A very good one. <laughs> okay, so she's obviously psychopathic. Yeah. Right, from what Virginia said, she was scarier than Epstein. Ugh. She said she's a very dangerous woman. So you've got that mindset, so they don't think like we do. So maybe it was a shock. Maybe she didn't think she was going to be, but she might have a bit of narcissism in there as well. Yep. And the fact she wouldn't hand over details, the true details of her financials, off the top of my head, I can't think. Well, you had your legal team going in and out. They could have gone and got that info for you. They could have retrieved that stuff. And so it's really hard to think, what was she thinking? Because to us, what she did is horrific. But we know it happened, but it's still confronting. But then she said, those girls, they are nothing. It's the whole elite thing. Yeah, it is. She's been brought up thinking she was elite. Her father, the money, the position she had in society due to her father, she was brought up to be the special, like daddy mm. naming a yacht after her. And she was quite intelligent, mm. although she never had a real day's work in her life. She didn't have a job. Well, she looked after the... I don't know what she did. She was like her dad's errand woman and he gave her the job of looking after a soccer team he had. I think it was Chelsea. And then she comes to New York and she tried her Ponzi scheme and her... I cannot find one bit of evidence on the internet archive of this corporate gifting service that she had. Because you found that... You screenshot some stuff really early on when we started digging into her. Yeah, it was on Reddit. Someone put a link to it and it was... Like a, a really, really early website. It was shocking, the look of it now. It was probably really high class back mm. then. She said her name was Eileen. That's right. Call me about the Ponzi scheme. And she invented a daughter. That's right. Now, because it was all about securing financials for your children. What a weirdo, Jen. What oh. a weirdo. Really, there's a lot to take in at the moment. Was there anything that shocked you during the week? Yes, her appearance. And the, the thing is, we haven't seen a mugshot, which every, there's been people saying, it's not true, there's no mugshot, there's no perp war, it's lies, it's lies. No, mm. the laws change. They do not, in federal cases, release a mugshot. Okay, we can cope with that. And then the artist's impression came up and people going, oh, she's not that colour. Oh, look at her, that's not her. 
lighting, you know, the artist. It looked like she, to me, it looked like she'd smuggled in a fake tan. Yeah. Or taken a Sharpie to her face to keep that tan upright. But supposedly her hair is pulled back in a bun. Yep. But if you've been in hiding for so long, you wouldn't be going to the hairdressers. You'd just be, mm. well, look at me. Look at us. We're yep. sort of towards hopefully the end of our strict isolation. I haven't had a haircut for ages. Oh, I did. I'm just pulling it back. Well, usually my haircuts are the chicken boning scissors, but anyway. <laughs> no, no. With me, I did the centre of my hair, the regrowth. But as soon as my hairdresser was back, I was like, right, I'm going. And I think I need to go again. What do you think? No, it's not too bad. So the way she looked shocked me. And apparently she's also put on weight. Yes. But I could see the resemblance in the photo. A lot of people were saying, no, no, it's not her. But it was. I, we haven't seen her since 2016. But Annie Farmer has seen her on a mm. video link. Annie said it was her. You know, she is there. She was a victim. Annie would know. Annie says it's her. Okay, enough of the drama that it wasn't really her. It's a body double. No, it's her. It's her. Now, I would just like to quickly say thank you to our six Patreon members who joined us for the live last week. It was very interesting and happened at a good time, didn't it? Oh, yeah. So, Christina, thank you for joining us. Anne, Susan, Pamela, Courtney, Tiffany, Melissa, Aussie Mum. Esther, Colleen, Rona, Eve, Tanya, Pam, Sue, Stephanie, Brandy, Hilary, Tracy, Nicole, Alison, Matt and Angela. Thank you for supporting us. It is greatly appreciated. And our other Patreon supporters who ask not to be named, we see you, we thank you. <laughs> the look on your face then. Oh my goodness, she's too funny, isn't she? I try. Are you going to go back to like haranguing people with gifts? I think so. Mm. I think so. But I think I need to do some more story time with Gilang. Yes. Why don't you? Well, I've been under the weather, so to speak, for a week or two. So it's time to get make the children come and video me as I read from Sarah Ferguson's books again. Yes. So Fergie has this story time with Fergie and friends and it just is like she's trolling us. She hasn't read the room. Some of the... She was talking about island paradises. Oh, my God, Fergie, please. She never has read the room. She has not. So we did a series of videos with this Jelaine Maxwell mask cardboard cutout face where I'm Fergie and you're Jizz Stain. And it's been retweeted to Sarah the Duchess on Twitter. Unfortunately, as she has blocked me, I can't send it directly to her. But other people are making sure it gets through. Oh, that's nice. I know. That's They're very probably good. getting blocked straight away as well. But, you know. So thank you for listening to us. We really appreciate it. We hope we're giving you a rundown. We're sort of in the weeds at the moment, aren't we? The dates encompassing those charges also were rather interesting. Yes. They are all dates before the 2005 to 2008 Florida investigation and charges against Epstein. Because remember, there was a plea deal naming certain women, but not limited to. Now, Justine's lawyers, legal team, would say that that plea deal meant she couldn't be charged in the future for any crimes. But it doesn't work retroactively to different crimes in different locations. So they were very smart mm. making sure that the initial charges covered that earlier period. Exactly. I think there's going to be more arrests. We'd really like to know what Sarah Kellen's up to. If you know, please get in contact with us. Snarkarellas at gmail.com. And if you want to chat to us on Twitter, send us any info or ask us questions because often... The questions you ask us end up on here as we sit in our um, laundry studio and discuss. So I'm Oh Really Truly. And I'm Lisa of Podcasts. You can also join our Prince and the Pervert Facebook group. That's where the conversation happens. Oh, yeah. And if you're a Patreon subscriber, we've also got a VIP chat on Discord. Yep. And how would you describe that? It's a messaging board, but it's just between our Patreon people. My children were horrified when they found out I was on Discord because that's their thing. Yeah, isn't it a gamer's thing? Yeah, That's how time. it started. But, yes, a lot of people use it. So 
thank you so much and we'll be in touch very soon. Bye. Bye. Hi, it's Lisa here. Do you want to help us produce the Prince and the Pervert podcast? One of our kind listeners has been asking how they can support us. So we've started a Patreon account, which not only benefits you in terms of extra content and exclusive content, it also helps us just cover our costs. At the end of the day, this is a labour of love and we're determined to follow the case until the end. These women absolutely matter. That's why we're doing this work. And we are all in this together. Details of the Patreon account are in the show notes. Thank you.